oh my god oh my god oh my god that's the only way i can start this video i will introduce to you an awesome athlete this woman is a machine and she's australian champion in weightlifting plus many other things that i wouldn't be able to tell you all the things and the wins that this woman had in her life so without further ado i would love to introduce to you demi plus our expert in personal fitness and i want to ask demi please introduce yourself and tell us a, a little bit about your story Hey, Pina, how's it going? Thank you for having me today. So I'm sitting here in my little, the dungeon, as I call it, my little studio, we could call it. And, you know, at the moment with these lockouts, it's where it's all been happening. So anyway, to tell you a little bit more about me, oh, let's go back a little bit. So we'll go back when I was a teenager, I was young and um, I always grew up around a lot of boy male cousins. So a lot of those guys used to play soccer in the backyard or football as it's called now. And, you know, none of the girls, in our family really did that so i was sort of one of the ones that used to play and mix in with the boys so growing up i was always used to playing sports and i was always running around with my shoes off and that's just how i was raised anyway my auntie came up and her sons were in a team and this was when we were 10 and she goes the coach left and we need four players so she called four of us cousins the girls and she goes we need to make up numbers please come and help us so we all rocked up to this under 12s uh, football match and the first game came and I, they put me in as a defender. So, you know, when I finished that game, we lost by like 12 goals. And I was really upset. And I said to, the, I said to the, my, my auntie at the time, I said, man, that goalkeeper put me in goals. The next game, they put me in goals. And that's where I stayed for the next 20 years. So that's pretty much how it started. Yeah. And then from there, it sort of, it went on. And um, from there, just, just really quickly, just a bit about my history. I've played in... Uh, total of six national league uh, seasons in Australia, three years when I was a teenager and then three years in my late 20s. Uh, was in the Matildas squad, played in the States on a collegiate scholarship. I was a goalkeeper over there with the Division One school and it was really awesome over there. They, they're really into their sports and that was sort of my first introduction to really serious strength and conditioning stuff, which is my passion. And then when I came back, I went to Spain. I played professionally in Spain for a year. Came back home, home soil, went to play for Sydney FC for two years. And then I sort of went into a little bit of a retirement because back then financially, it's a little bit difficult for women to um, survive and to play at the same time. So I had to sort of put all my ambitions on hold and I sort of went to work. And I, I, you know, I was doing three jobs. I was working seven days a week and things were, you know, that were difficult. That's just how it was back then. That's all we knew. And in that time, I found CrossFit. Okay, so I was having a bit of a break and I found CrossFit and I really liked it because it made me feel like I was training really hard and I was sort of feeling the way I used to feel when we played in college because we used to get slammed in college. We used to train 25 hours a week and it was really full on and I really enjoyed it. So got into that, I found and learned a bit more about what that was and, you know, from there I just got stuck into it. I went to three regionals and then you know, I ended up going back to football for a little bit. And I'm, I just had this ambition to go to the Olympic Games and to play in the World Cup. And I went back for another season, but it was just too difficult for me financially. So I ended up going back after my season with the Wanderers. And I sort of said, that's enough now. Time, time to focus on work, make a bit, bit of money and actually survive now. And, you know, after we finished that, I got into CrossFit. And I was always one of the bigger girls on the circuit, you know. So I was always... The girl, when people looked at me, they sort of said, you know, she doesn't, um, she doesn't look the part. Okay, what does look the part mean? Everyone looks at someone and they think if they've got a six pack and they've got, you know, beautiful shoulders and this and that. I know that, exactly what you mean because I do CrossFit and, and the people that come out of CrossFit gyms uh, are scary. I remember when I, 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 my husband said, let's do CrossFit. And I said, and I Googled CrossFit and I'm like, are you crazy? Do I look like that? No. Why do you want me to go there? Like you want them to kill me. So I totally get what you're saying. And you, so you, you still went there and you still competed. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I had my blinders on. I was an athlete, so I didn't really look at those things. I didn't realize those things until later. And, and, you know, I didn't, 
have the look that everybody else had. And, and I went to three regionals and, um, you know, I went to three regionals and on the circuit, like if we're looking at the international circuit at the time, I was one of the heavier girls up there, but I was still doing muscle ups. I was still, you know, upside down on my hands. I was still doing all of these things. I was fit. It's just, that's the, the, the structure of my body. And I've been told my whole life, even in, in soccer as a goalkeeper, even, even then I was always told from a teenager, I was too, too big. I was too this, but I'd always get selected for teams. I'd always be the one that was getting picked up. And it's just, it was confusing as a kid to sort of, it wasn't the right feedback, you know, people are telling you you need to, to be one way, but they kept picking you. So it didn't really make sense. And sort of, I was always raised with that, you know, that thing in my mind, like I was overweight, I was too big, I was too big, yet I was always passing my fitness tests. I was always, you know, we're comparing, I'm comparing myself to other athletes at the time. I'm not comparing myself to, you know, an everyday person, but the feeling is still the same. And when you're sort of raised in that environment, it's difficult, right, to get that out of your head. And even now you look around in the industry and people are, you know, there's three things that sell, all right, as a personal trainer. It's your looks, it's your brains, it's your experience. So at the moment, I'm pushing for two, you know. So we've got the brains and the experience. We'll see how we go. <laughs> no, but then how did you end up from CrossFit to uh, Olympic lifting? Because I know you're a champion for Australia in Olympic lifting. Well, my last, my last Open that I competed and I finished, my best Open was 13th. And I went to regionals. And then after that, I just started getting a couple of injuries and I was having a bit of a hard time. So I hurt my neck that year. I was out for three or four months, came back, went back into it, but just wasn't the same. And then I hurt my shoulder. Then I hurt my other shoulder and then my knee started going. So that was two years of injuries. And I just sort of said, this is enough's enough. I couldn't compete at the level or train at the level that I wanted to, to be at that level. So I decided to focus a bit more on my studies and I sort of slowed down on the training. I just calmed it down. I pursued my master's of strength and conditioning in that time. It sort of distracted me, just, you know, took me away from what I was trying to learn. And then um, I, I met a friend who knew a weightlifting coach and I just went and tried it. And he said, you know, I was, he goes, I wish you came to me six years earlier. You could have been an Olympian. And I was like, oh, well, it's a bit late for that now. You know, coming in as a 32, 33 year old athlete in a sport that requires you to be participating for 10 to 15 years, you know, these weightlifters train so hard. They train for, you know, people just want to do what they do and they don't understand how hard it is. But anyway, we found that and we lived through that sport for a little bit. I won two nationals and now we're here. I was hoping to win another one this year, but now we don't know what's happening with this lockdown. Everyone's sort of stuck at home and I'm trying to train as best as I can. But as you can see, my space is really small. And if I miss a weight, I'm not sure if that, uh, that material is made out of asbestos. I need to be careful. I don't knock it. <laughs> Wow. So, but I guess um, out of everything that looks negative, there's always a positive outcome because I've known you now for a while and the whole time I've known you, you've been saying, oh, uh, I want to implement an online system. I want to implement online classes. I want to do this and I want to do that. So I guess now because we're stuck inside, that's exactly what you did, isn't it? It is. It certainly is. And it actually has forced me to put my business hat on, you know, it was just, uh, I think that any crisis, whether it be this one that we're in now or in general, it will either make or break you. And I've chosen to not let it break me. I've chosen to use this time to learn more things about business. You know, put me in front of a group of 50 people, I'll thrive, I'll, I'll, I'll embrace it, I'll, I'll enjoy it, I'll, I'll live in the moment. But when you, you ask me to sort of sit down on the computer for five hours and work out my business operations and functions. It's not something that I, I want to do. I prefer to go for a 20 kilometer run followed by 50 squats at hundred kilos. I, I prefer to do something like that. That sounds so crazy to everybody else, but sitting at a computer has been one of the hardest things. And I've learned during this time that in order to be great at what I'm good at, I need to be good at things that I'm not. And that's what I'm learning now. And it's really been a great experience for me to, to sort of have to push and, implement this online stuff because now what I'm finding with people and my clients is that they're all jumping on board now and, and they're more consistent. They can just roll out of bed. They get up at train at 6.30. They get their half hour, hour session in and they can get on with their day. They don't have to worry about who's going to look after their kids. What am I going to do? And the, the beauty of it all is, is that I'm actually seeing people that were training two times a week, one time a week. I'm seeing them four or five times a week at the moment. So I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah. Dini, how does that work? So what do I need to have? Like, so if I want to participate to one of these classes, how much does it cost? And do I have to have weight? So what's the minimal equipment that you require uh, if, I'm, if I 
and what if I don't train? I've never trained at all. Like, can I come and train as well? So I guess these are the, the first questions that come across my mind when I hear uh, that you're running these classes online. So it's, it's basically your first two sessions are free. You can come and try it. It's $25 a week for, I've got 13 classes on offer at the moment, looking to expand and add more. But all you need is yourself, okay? Every workout's based around people with no equipment and progressions are offered for those who have equipment. So sometimes, for example, if I've got a workout with squats and push-ups in them, okay, you can do them with no equipment, but the people that have equipment have barbells, have dumbbells, I offer progressions for those people. So the goal is that this program caters to everybody. It doesn't just cater to people that don't have equipment or people that do have equipment it's that it offers an opportunity for everyone to get better doesn't no matter what their level is so that's really important to me my programming is something that i really really like to focus on and make sure that you know we're all focusing on some, a different part of the body at different points and we don't overload people so you know anyone that's new there's videos i upload videos i've got uh, share screens with workouts and things like that so if anyone's unsure there's always an image or a video up there for them to see so they understand okay I'm going to share here. So I've been trying the workout so far and to be honest, and I want to, I want to give my personal experience sure. on that. That is, um, sometimes, and, uh, I'm a big girl as well. Like, I'm, uh, and when I say big girl, like you're big and fit, I'm big and fat. It's very different. <laughs> But one thing that is really daunting, especially because I'm used to go to CrossFit and yes, I, I love my CrossFit gym. There are all types of people, all types of physique, but sometimes when you have, you're in a class and you have all these amazing people that look so amazing, it kind of makes me feel really bad because it's so hard for you not to compare yourself with those people. And what I found with your online classes is that because you're not, you're on your own in the living room. And, and the way it's run, you only focus on the workout and on yourself and you're not looking at anyone else. It's so, it gives me so much more privacy and it gives me much more confidence to do these things. So I find that if, if someone at the moment is struggling with weight or with fitness and don't want to approach a gym because it is daunting to go to a gym full of mirrors and full of people, I honestly, I'm enjoying very much this, this fact that I'm on my own in the living room, getting the biggest sweat of my life. So this is my personal opinion about your training. It's, it's amazing. And um, because you, you've been doing this for so long, what are the questions that usually you get over and over again about fitness and, and about uh, weight and, and about training? So what, what, if you could give people three tips about to keep consistent and stuff like that what would you say to people so the first one with with my crew at the moment one of the things that we're finding is that people at the moment are finding it hard to get back on the the, the sort of bandwagon the consistency wagon things are changing they're at home they're looking after kids they're running around they're doing all these things so the biggest tip that i can give to anybody at the moment that's either starting or trying to improve on something is just choose one to two things that you want to work on in the week and focus on those because what happens is we get caught up in this mentality that I need to I'm putting on weight because I'm stuck in lockdown I'm not training enough and then I want to do all of these things and cut out all of these things but the problem is is that you can't adhere to it if you're giving yourself too many things to follow the best way to do it is to make one task and try and stick to that all week so say for example your task is which it might be cutting out snacks during the week. It might be cutting out alcohol during the week. It might be, you know, going for a walk every day. Something as simple as that, just changing one part of your routine to reflect a positive sort of mindset because you'll spin on, what will happen later is if you stick to that, it's easier to make another change. If you can't stick to one thing, then there's, it's hard to make more changes. So best, best thing that you could do right now in this time is choose one thing, one to two things that you believe you can stick to maintain that for a week or two if that's easy enough add another thing if it's not then just stick to that until you get it done so that's a big one for me right now and i think that's a very important one in this time because we can't set unrealistic expectations on ourselves definitely one um, another one uh, someone asked me the other day dimmy how do i i'm not motivated okay well you're not motivated because you're comparing the current climate and your current self to somebody else somebody in the past somebody that's you know been to the gym and had a weight 
in their hands. You, you can't compare what's happening now with what happened five weeks ago because it's a whole different thing. So, so there's nothing wrong with adding some body weight movements in the day instead of going and squatting a five by five heavy. Let's change it. Let's do some body weight squats, maybe some squat jumps, maybe some single leg movements. Change the stimulus right now and keep the effect that your brain wants to feel because at the end of the day, you're doing the best you can with what you've got. And not everyone has a setup like I do. I, you know, This is my industry. I've got some stuff, but not everyone has that. There's nothing wrong with changing the type of training that you're doing for the interim. It's, it's probably not a bad thing for you. It's actually going to change. Maybe you might uh, get over some plateaus or get over some speed humps that you've had in your journey thus far. So, you know, don't set unreasonable expectations. I suppose that's the same sort of thing off what I said before. That's, 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 yeah. How's that? That's very good. That's actually very, very good. The very powerful, what you said. And I think it's so powerful that applies in so many other aspects of our lives. Just now I was having a conversation uh, with a dear friend on the phone and I, and I said to him, what I'm, I'm finding at the moment is that people are focusing on what they can't do yes. instead of focusing on what they can. Like, yes, we can't go out and we can't see people and we can't touch people, but we can do so much more. And yes. why just get stuck on that mindset? And uh, I think that's awesome what you just said. Now, Dimi, if people want to, you said there are two free classes. So if people yeah. want to try and jump in, where should they go in order to, to jump on this class? And how does it work? So I have a link at the moment. It's Dimi Pulos Online Training. Dot splash that. Oh, the link's a little bit long, but you can go to my social media. At the moment, there's a link in my bio. So if you're on my Instagram, there's a link in the bio. It's uh, DP Strength and Fitness. Or you can go on my Facebook page, Dimi Pulos Strength and Fitness, and there's more information there about that. You just got to click Join Now button and it'll notify me and I'll pretty much get in contact with you right away and we'll just schedule a time that we can sit down and meet. Even if you're not comfortable jumping onto the the conferencing call in a group we actually organize a one-on-one -on -one private session beforehand so we'll make sure that the transition's nice and smooth so it also doesn't affect the class that we've got we want to make sure that when you come into it it's you know it's smooth and you're not really saying what do i do or you know what button is this how do i mute it how do i unmute it we want to sort of avoid all those those glitches during our actual session so we'll organize a one-on-one -on -one. we'll sit down and talk about it and if you have any questions, you can ask me there. You'll get you you get me all to yourself for that half an hour, and then we'll put you into a class. Is there a, a, an age group, like, or oh, you you can take anyone, any age? Anybody. I've, at the moment, I've got a mother and a son combination, and you know they're training. He's he's twelve, and and you know she's in her mid thirties. We have we have a variety of different people, so there's no you know we're very inclusive in that we want everyone to be able to train. If you can't. If you've never trained before and I have a workout where there's say 50 squats, 50 push-ups, 55 rounds, something, you're looking at that and you're thinking, whoa, I'm not going to make you do that. I know, I know exactly that that's not something that you're going to be able to do because we had that chat earlier on. I might get you to go pull up a chair and sit on the chair 20 times and I might get you to sit down after that. I don't know. It just depends on how you move. So it's very important for people to understand that training is a progressive thing. We can't, I'll tell you a story. There's, I don't know if anyone's heard of this story, Milo of Croton. He, he was a young man and this was back in, you know, back in the day when the Olympiads first all started. Anyway, he was from this town and he used to, when he was a child, walk around with this calf on his back and the village people would look at him and laugh and say, look at this kid, there's something wrong with this kid. He'd walk around the village, he'd climb up the mountains. As this calf slowly, slowly grew into a bull, he grew into a very strong man, okay? And hence the, the theory of progressive overload comes. You can't expect to be carrying a bull up a mountain when you haven't carried the calf up the mountain first. So it's a very, very powerful story. It's very true to training and you have to know that we all start at a different level. So don't be scared, training should be enjoyable. Wow, and here I just drop the mic. There is nothing else to be said. Demi, it was such a, an awesome time talking to you. Thank you for your time. I know we are, you have to go because you have a class very soon at 5.30. And thank you so much. And thank you for all your knowledge and everything. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. And I'll see you in my next interview.